welcome along to the Daily Diaries once again. Crystal with you now. I've just washed my hair, so it's a little bit like kinky crazy at the moment. <laughs> we'll sort that out later. I'm also not wearing any foundation because we are today going to be doing another look with the Hutopian Dream Palette, the Pat McGrath Mothership Number no. 9 Palette, because uh, Rachel Ray shout out. She wanted to see another look, so that's what we're going to do for you, girl. <laughs> um, if you're new here, this is a fun makeup channel. I am a qualified makeup artist, but I don't even think that really matters because makeup is such an, an artistic, subjective form, so you just do what feels good, right? Totally. Um, so if you would like to subscribe, that'd be great, and hopefully you like this video and you can give it a thumbs up. Alrighty, so first of all, the Pat McGrath Mothership Palette is She's stunning to look at. I will say that mine is uh, filthy. I'm just like, <laughs> might just quickly get some of that glittery stuff off. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> okay, it's still pretty, still pretty messy. But anyways, that is the Spectacular 10 Pan Palette. That is the Mothership 9. Isn't she pretty? So this one retails for $200 Australian from Pat McGrath, which is so expensive. I mean, honestly, it's so expensive. <laughs> um, there are payment options and I got mine on sale on a payment plan as well so I did all the things to get it to be affordable for me um, now so like I said it has 10 pans in it and I believe the website describes it as being you know how Pat always has like amazing descriptions of her products, but she describes this one as being the hyper wearable hues, prismatic nebulas, ultra blendable, and it does have a variety of different finishes in the palette as well. So there are holographic blitz astrals, there's shade shifting triochromes, velvety mattes uh, with intense saturation, ultra blendable creamy powders, and you can use it wet or dry. So I have to say all of those things are pretty true thus far, having used it. So this is the second look I'll be doing with this palette. I will link the other video for you as well if you want to check that one out. Gosh, I look really pale right now, don't I? It's because I've just been working nonstop. And if my voice sounds a little bit croaky, it's because I'm actually battling a bug at the moment. So um, I'll talk to you more about that as we get things underway. But uh, the good news is I'm COVID negative. So <laughs> I did a test and it's a negative which I knew it would be um, because I so for those of you who don't know I have endometriosis which you'll actually find a couple of videos on this channel uh, to help you live with endo if you are someone who suffers from it and I when I work full-time hours I just get I get sick I get sick every time and I will remain sick until I get a chance for my body to rest. <laughs> so uh, the glands go up, I get, a, I get a funny throat, I might lose my voice. It's just all part of this endo thing. If you have endo and you actually get like a sore throat and stuff, um, often I'd be really interested to hear from you they are sort of linking endo to an immuno, what is it, uh, immunocompromised uh, disease not right with the words at the moment but yeah that's what that is so yeah anyway you might notice that my voice is a little huskier than usual <laughs> okay so to start with with this gorgeous beautiful baby I think we are going to take the I already have like a concealer I have the Casas Revilla concealer on my eyelid and I've have I powdered that I don't know but I'm going to <laughs> but we're gonna put the the really beautiful bright color here which is what is that called I'm so bad with names of eyeshadows it's called shockwave <laughs> so we're gonna put that on I'm just gonna quickly chuck some hourglass dim light powder around my eye lid just to make sure that we're all, all greaseless <laughs> so yeah I haven't done the rest of my foundation though because I'm going to be using some glittery shades and although I feel like I can control it pretty well there's always a little bit of fallout so it just depends if that bothers you then do your eyeshadow first if it doesn't don't worry about it <laughs> okay so we are going to take got some new refer brushes which I will be using today which I'm really enjoying so far you can tell like I've been using Colourpop because they're stained already but <laughs> They're really nice brushes, I have to have to admit. Got them on sale for Black Friday as well. So I did all of the shopping on Black Friday, honestly. <laughs> Let's get into it. So I'm going to grab my mirror. And taking that Shockwave peachy shade, I'm just using a big fluffy brush because I just want to pop that kind of 
all up through my crease all the way over and then in the side a little bit and in this inner corner so I'm not doing super precise placements we are going to do a little bit of a halo eye I think <laughs> I shouldn't say that because I always say I'm going to do it and it just never ends up being a halo eye but that's cool we'll, uh, we'll do our best today <laughs> I think you often just find what works for your eye shape and you tend to go with that so I am um, excited to mix it up a little bit though same for the other eye it's this whole symmetry thing that I'm kind of into <laughs> oh is that hair gonna be annoying I think it is I'm just gonna get that out of the way for a minute I did bring a here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> headband to sort that out. My hair is like very naturally um, curly and kinky and uh, I would often straighten it but I'm just I couldn't be bothered today <laughs> if I'm being honest and also um, I just wanted to give it a little break because I bleached it not that long ago and so I wanted to not heat style it so it can have a little rest. <laughs> I need to be nice to it for once. I've literally just lost that brush that I was using so uh, fear not. <laughs> Found her. Okay, let's, where were we? Let's continue <laughs> with that same shockwave color, which is a really lovely peachy color. It looks super, super bright in the pan, but I feel like it isn't anywhere near that confronting on the eye. It's corally, but it's it's not like freakishly bright or anything. Definitely wearable. Oh, I feel naked too because I've got I haven't done my eyebrows, which is weird. <laughs> it's so weird for me I never ever do foundation last I always do foundation first it's just such a habit <laughs> such a habit that I'm used to all right this does build up very nicely I like to take mine all the way up so I'll place it up and then I'll just blend out the edges um, up towards my brow I like a high placement of eyeshadow because of the shape of my eyelids so if I keep it low, you can't even see it when I close my eyes. <laughs> it's just it's no fun for anyone. All that time and effort, nobody could see it. That's that. Looking good so far. Just using my brush switch. If you don't have one of these, these are the best things in the whole world. You literally just swirl your brush around on it and it takes the residue color off, which is awesome because I'm terribly lazy when it comes to washing my brushes and I, I don't do it anywhere near as much as I should. I know, I know, but I only use them on myself, these ones, so. Whatever, <laughs> just give myself my own germs. I'm fine with that. All right, next what we're gonna do is, we are going, I'm gonna keep this one like pretty, pretty simple. We are going to take, now you don't have to do this, um, but because I just happen to have one of the Pat McGrath Intensifiers Artistry Wands, we are going to use that as a base for the glittery shades that I'm about to use on my eye. You don't need this. Um, because honestly the Pat McGrath glitters work just fine just on their own I would use a finger to apply them absolutely but I just really enjoy the intensity and they do stick really well when I use the the intensifiers which you can also get from the Pat McGrath website all right I'm gonna take the bronze Solaris shade which is the sparkly gold right there and taking my finger I'm going to place that on this side of my eyelid, so on the outer third, and I'm going to do the same on the inner third. It is tricky with them using your finger because you might not get the same control, of course, that you would use, get with a brush, and especially if you have like fat fingers which I don't think I especially do but <laughs> I do have small eyelids so if your finger to eyelid ratio is off it makes it challenging <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that thing before I haven't I just made it up okay so same goes in that corner and you can see I'm getting glitter everywhere under my eye which is <laughs> which is why I did do my why I'm doing my foundation last in fact I'm not even trying to be neat now because I'm like what's the point <laughs> So I'm really only leaving a teeny weeny gap in the middle that hasn't been covered in gold. I do feel like the gold is more opaque on the other eye. So I just want to go in over again. Yeah, that's looking better. Faux show. It's on and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I 
up close and personal. <laughs> Alrighty, then I'm gonna do the same thing with the, what shade is this? Astral Venusian Orchid, which I did use in the last look that I did as well because it's just so stunning. How do you not, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> How do you not use this particular shade? It is absolutely beautiful in that top corner there. So again, taking my finger, pressing the glitter onto it and then pressing that onto the center of the eyelid. Mmm, so pretty! <laughs> okay, and same goes for the other eye. It's that symmetry thing again. This look would be great with purple as well. Coral and purple would be... would be really cool. So, I did say I was going to keep this one pretty simple, and it actually looks pretty beautiful as it is once I get some, um, the under eye done and some mascara, eyeliner, etc. But I just, oh, I just can't resist, even when I'm supposed to be doing a halo eye. I am going to be using this Skin Show Nude Ecstasy shade, which is that one there. And I'm going to pop it somewhere, because it's so pretty, I just can't not use it. But, the question is... Where? I wonder what happens if I put it here. Oh, that's actually really pretty. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to tap that on top of the other glitter that I used in the middle there. Oh wow, you can still see the other glitter, but it just makes that middle colour just pop. Oh, that was a good move. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Alrighty. I'm going to put some foundation on and then we'll get back to finish the look. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have got my foundation on my face. I've also got a little bit of bronzer on and I have done my brows. The foundation, foundation? was <laughs> the foundation? The foundation that I'm wearing is the same that I have been just wearing nonstop for quite some time now. It is the Tarte Found Sealer Foundation, which I absolutely love because I prefer a medium light coverage. I don't like heavy finishes I like my skin to look like skin as much as possible but just glowier and uh, more perfect <laughs> you know I don't want much at all um so that is what I have on on my brows I've just used the benefit gimme brow gel next we are going to finish this off so <laughs> I'm gonna take my Stila stay all day waterproof liquid eyeliner in intense smoky quartz which is oh my gosh that's my cat <laughs> These liquid eyeliners are amazing. I used the black one for many, many years and then I sort of stopped wearing liquid eyeliner for a while there. I just went with pencil. Um, and now I, well, I went to buy another black one after all this time, but I was like, oh, they have more colors. And so instead I went with this beautiful, it's like a chocolatey brown, black brown. I wanted something just a little bit less harsh than a black. And this is awesome. This um, liquid eyeliner is hands down the best. Like, there is a reason why I've been buying it for over a decade. It's because it stays exactly where it's supposed to stay. It's fairly miraculous, especially because things like to slide all over my face, generally speaking. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna give her a little bit of a, whoop, a little bit of a flick. And repeat. <laughs> this tone actually looks really beautiful. Alrighty. So actually, I was gonna. <laughs> this is a terrible time to talk while I'm trying to do liquid eyeliner, but I um I was gonna expand on earlier. So yeah, I am um, battling a bug at the moment. I've been working a whole lot, which is the most I have worked since I had to leave my full time radio job. Um, because of my endo, because I was just, <laughs> it was a disaster. My body was just hating life. Um, and so as what always happens is that I have gotten sick and I've been fighting this bug for a little bit now. Um, but I did need to take a test just to make sure, like I don't want to get anyone else sick, obviously, especially my parents who are having their booster shot in just a couple of days, I think. But the situation is that you can do a rapid antigen test, but they are so hard to come by. Like they're supposed to be at all the pharmacies and shopping centers, but I've went to like four pharmacies around here and none of them had any, neither did the supermarket. So I finally tracked some down a little ways away from home and was able to pick up a kit and I've done the test and I am COVID negative, which I knew I would be. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to, as I always say, to keep your loved ones safe more than happy to do what's necessary because we are I feel like we are so privileged here in Australia we are so privileged 
and just the fact that we have vaccines available to us and we are able to protect ourselves and and our families and our you know I've got a a beautiful friend who is very ill at the moment and just I think of her and I think of the people in my life who aren't well and I want to do everything in my power to keep them healthy and well so you know I feel like we're very lucky to have that option available to us uh so that's where I'm at at the moment and I certainly hope that you are well and you and your loved ones are safe and healthy I made a meal out of that but that's fine <laughs> it's because I was talking <laughs> the one thing you will always hear me say especially when I make a mistake <laughs> is that there is just there's beauty in imperfection and I truly mean that not just when I make a mistake to try and cover my tracks <laughs> that everything doesn't have to be perfect all the time you know it just doesn't and things can be fixed all right so that's where we're at oh definitely just liquid lined my uh phone so <laughs> she'll be real pretty <laughs> and messy when I put it on my face <laughs> never mind we'll sort that we'll sort that out it's all good Okay, I love that eyeliner, it's amazing. All right, so, <laughs> my little mind does it work. We are gonna finish off the underneath of the eye. I am going to do, I'm gonna do the same thing that I do on the top, on the bottom actually, I think. So, I'm gonna take this Refa 03, which is like a really fine, small pencil brush, which is really good, I definitely recommend it. Really enjoying using this for my lower lash line work. And I'm just going to repeat the process. So I've got that shockwave corally shade taking here. Sort of is going to meet in the middle there, but I'm going to make sure that the outer edge is more intense. And the inner edge. But yeah, seeing as we have talked a little bit about endo today, I do have videos. There is one that is basically what I do to help me deal with endo on the daily. So the kind of things that I use to help me get by. And yeah, there's one that just sort of talks about my journey so far there. If you do want to know any more about that. All right, that's on. Instead of using the artistry one like I did on the top, I'm actually just going to wet the tip of my little tiny refer brush there. And I'm going to dip that into the gold glittery shade that we used on the top as well. So that one and run that through the middle of the lash line on the bottom there. If you're interested, I can do another eye look as well where I don't use the glitters. If you would prefer to see just how the palette performs with just sort of the mattes and metallics, I can absolutely do that as well. I just feel like most people will buy a Pat McGrath palette because they want the glitter and the shimmer, so. But I am happy to do that for you if you want to. If you want me to. <laughs> All right, so I'm just dipping that uh, same refer brush back in and I'm going to take the shimmery shade from the corner that I dabbed on top of the middle of the lid before. I'm gonna do it in a different order this time. So I'm gonna pop that just right in that middle space on the lower lash line. Honestly, I haven't really used these wet, so it's interesting to see how they go. Alrighty, and once again, I'm just taking that same little refer brush and I am using the beautiful Blitz Astral Amethyst shade from that corner. I love that shade so much. <gasps> is it? No, that's Crystal Orchid, Ugh, whatever it is. It's stunning. <laughs> I told you I'm terrible at shade names. Okay, and just popping that in the, in the middle of that lash line there once again. Wow, you can really see that shine now. What I'm gonna do now is swap over my memory card because it's about to die. I'll be right back. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> I think we are just going to leave it there. Although I might put a ColourPop pencil in the lower lash line just for something funsies. And I think I'm going to do the, oh, it's my rag doll. She's so noisy. <sighs> yeah, bro, I'm here. <laughs> Normally she should talk back to me. All right, I'm going to take the ColourPop cream gel liner pencil in... Bay Breeze, which is a nice peachy, corally colour. Sorry, all you can see is my... Which is a beautiful, corally, peachy colour. Pop that into the waterline. And we'll wax some mascara on. She is done, my friends. So that's actually pretty, like, it's a pretty simple look. You could do it real quick. Because the good thing about glitter is it doesn't have to be, like, 
uber precise, does it? Because it's glitter, so it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. You can't like see the edges clearly. So that is a, a good thing if you are trying to save on time. All right, I'm just gonna pop some mascara on. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have got some mascara on now. I have been using the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara, which I really like. It's a tubing mascara and it is the only one that does not wind up all over my face, but I always, always put underneath it the Tarte Opening Act Lash Primer. It is my favorite lash primer. Probably my favorite lash product because it just adds fibers to your lashes and they're curly and long and voluminous and beautiful. Whereas the mascara on its own probably wouldn't be enough for me because I like big lashes, but without wearing false lashes because who has time for that and who can be bothered with that most of the time? Literally the only time I ever wear false lashes is when I'm in a theater production and I'm on stage and I don't even do a full strip. I do the lashify just on the outer corner because also when you have smaller eyes, it can it can just make your eyes look even smaller and, and crowd them in. So I just like to put little flicks on the outer edge, but I just generally can't be bothered doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I love when my mascara gives me the look that I want. So we've done that. Now I'm just going to pop some cheeks on. So I've got my Tarte uh, Breezy Bronzer in Seychelles on already. It's a cream bronzer that is gorgeous. And I'm going to take my Ilia Multi Stick in at last. And I'm going to pop that on my cheeks. I don't have the brush I would normally use to put it on with because I, <laughs> I put it away. <laughs> but that's okay because the beauty of these is you can literally just bang it on from the stick and use your finger. The warmth from your finger helps to blend it out really nicely. It's such a beautiful product. I can't recommend more highly the Ilia Multi Sticks. They are beautiful on the skin. They really are and they last and they're just a stunning finish dewy creamy but not slippery and you can also use them on your lips and they feel really comfortable on your lip as well which i do also really enjoy for my cheeks the rms lip to cheek but i do find that the rms lip to cheeks on my lips is dry so i genuinely only use that for my cheeks but with the ilia multi sticks i use them for both cheeks and lips and love them on both equally <laughs> alrighty so that is on and now I'm gonna go in with my Westman Atelier highlight stick it's the lit up stick in Parla <laughs> which is sort of a beigey champagne base as opposed to the original which is more of a blue blue base which I can't really rock unfortunately it just looks like I'm ill so again I'm just using my finger to spread that out a little bit there Cupid's bow I don't highlight my nose because I can't really see the point because it just makes my foundation slide off. And also I just don't want a highlighted nose. I don't really, I don't really get that trend. So that's personal preference, not for me. Um, alrighty, so that is on. And what I think I'm gonna do is, cause I'm feeling fun. <laughs> I need some vibrancy to get back after I've been like on the six train. I think what I'm gonna do is use my Westman Atelier Bordeaux Lip Suede Palette, which is this gorgeous creature here. Hello, ooh, look at her. So it does feature four different colors. These are pricey as well, but bloody hell, it's so worth it. I love this thing. And I'm gonna use the brightest shade in the palette. It's kind of like a pinky, ready, fuchsia pop. <laughs> and you can do it with your finger if you just want to stain, but I'm going to use just this crappy old lip brush that came from God knows where, and I'm going <laughs> to use that to apply it to my lip because I just want it to be bold. These last so well on your lip. And you'll notice that a lot of the products that I use are cleaner formulations. I know Tarte is considered like clean at Sephora. Westman Atelier is a clean brand as is Ilia. And other products that I use like RMS, Milk, they're cleaner formulas. I like using clean formulas wherever I can. Unfortunately, I will say that I've yet to find amazing, this is what happens when you're talking and putting lipstick on. <laughs> I'm yet to find truly amazing eyeshadow clean formula. So if you know of an incredible clean eyeshadow formula, I would love to try it. I do love the Kassas 10 second eyeshadow in Copper Halo, but I know that they're discontinuing those, the 10 second eyeshadows, well, as far as I'm aware. So that's a bit of a shame because I do love that product. But I will say that 
I had a couple of the other colors from that line and they weren't as good, but the copper halo is oh, beautiful. I actually bought a new one as well, so I've got that um, stashed away. But I do use all clean skincare because I just like to put clean things in on my body and less chemicals. Plus with endo, my body is already inflamed and fighting inflammation. So I don't really want to add anything to that, that it feels like it needs to fight as well. You know what I mean? So I use all clean skincare, but I don't use all clean makeup, but I do use as much as I can. I love it! These retail for, I think, around 155 so they are expensive, but if you remember that you get four different lipsticks in there, so you're getting kind of four products for the price of one, it actually works out to be quite reasonable. Plus they last forever on the lips. They're clean, their packaging is super solid. Yeah, I love them. I love these from Westman Atelier. Definitely worth the money in my opinion. Alrighty, so I believe we are done with this look. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to do other than maybe just add a little powder to my nose, but that was a pretty simple look to replicate. So hopefully that's given you some inspiration. That's better. It's a bit shiny. It's quite hot here. So summer. Yes, just how I like it. I wish it was hot every day of the year. I'm not complaining. <laughs> so that is the finished look using the Utopian Dream palette from Pat McGrath. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as I said, let me know if you would like another one using just the mattes and the metallic shades and leaving out the glitters. It'll be hard, but I'll see if I can do it. I also have another tutorial coming up from the Mothership. Ooh. I can't remember what number it is, but it's the Divine Rose 2 Mothership palette from Pat McGrath. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. And I've got so many eyeshadow palette looks just lined up for you. I'm so excited to get to them all. So yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Stay well, stay healthy, stay happy. And uh, I'll see you back here soon. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.